Look at Henry. He's pleasant. He's non-threatening and actually a killing machine. People say, why? Why are you doing it? Matches are made in heaven, they say. But for these 10 couples, hell appears to be a more appropriate setting for their meat cute. There's nobody that's going to take me out of this prison and send me to Disneyland with you. Join us as we explore the darkest depths of human connection as love transforms into something insidious. Electrical cord that he used to kill Leslie. These criminals demonstrate that even the most divine unions can harbor the most malevolent intentions. From whispered promises to blood-stained vows, their twisted story unfolds with each terrible step. Brace yourselves for a plunge into madness as we investigate the terrifying stories. Number 10. Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Ian Brady's evil connection with Myra Hindley began in the antiseptic confines of a chemical company where they both worked. Their twisted bond began here amid the hum of machinery and the caustic aroma of industrial chemicals. They formed a friendship out of a sick obsession with heinous actions, which would lead them down a path of unspeakable horror. Their mutual preoccupation with horrible atrocities formed the foundation of their relationship inspiring numerous late-night chats as they descended deeper into the depths of human depravity. Brady's fascination lay in the precise orchestration of the perfect crime, an endeavor that struck a chord with Hindley, sparking a common ambition to push the bounds of morality. Their journey into darkness culminated in July 1963, when they committed their first horrific crime. They took the life of Pauline Reed. Reed, a companion of Hindley's, was a victim of their depravity, passing away sadly before being abandoned in a shallow grave in the lonely moors outside Manchester. This gruesome ceremony would be performed four more times as Brady and Hindley continued to satisfy their unquenchable desire for bloodshed. Their criminal spree came to an end with the horrifying demise of Edward Evans, whose life was also taken by Brady in front of a shocked David Smith. Smith, moved by conscience or perhaps pure dread, helped dispose of the victim's remains before bravely telling his wife the horrific truth. With the wheels of justice in motion, the police were quickly summoned, and the wicked team of Brady and Hindley became entangled in the coils of their malice. The evidence against them was damning, demonstrating the depths of their depravity. Among the wealth of incriminating evidence was an audio recording of one of their victim's final agonized moments a chilling reminder of terrible misery and despair. When confronted with indisputable evidence of their crimes, Brady and Hindley were forced to confess, their voices ringing with a sickening disregard for the horrors they had perpetrated. The legal verdict brought swift and unwavering justice. Both Hindley and Brady were sentenced to spend the rest of their lives behind bars, their liberty eternally sacrificed to the harsh grasp of jail. Even after the doors of their prison cells closed behind them, the specter of their atrocities lingered in the collective psyche of society. For Myra Hindley, the final chapter in her life began in a thousand two when she breathed her last within the walls of her prison cell, a fitting finish to a life marked by unimaginable depravity. Ian Brady, on the other hand, would live for another 15 years, demonstrating the lasting power of evil. In 2017, the angel of death finally claimed him, bringing an end to a chapter in history marked by the lowest levels of human depravity. Number 9. Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka are a couple whose evil actions shocked Canada. Before Carla Homolka entered the picture, Paul Bernardo had already established himself as the Scarborough Killer. He had a long history of kidnapping young girls and repeatedly evading the court system. But when he met Homolka, their relationship took a nasty turn into unfathomable depths of depravity. What's equally sickening is that their first victim was Carla's sister. Can you imagine being betrayed? They drugged her, took her life, and then recorded every terrible detail of their heinous act. Despite the overwhelming evidence against them, they were able to elude justice, a surprising development that empowered them to continue their reign of terror. But their desire for destruction did not end there. Two more innocent girls succumbed to their horrible urges while Bernardo perpetrated even more atrocities on his own. However, despite their seemingly relentless march, their demise was inevitable. 
A violent confrontation between Bernardo and Homolka landed her in the hospital, and cracks began to appear in their veneer of invincibility. Law enforcement pressured Homolka to ultimately break her silence, as they suspected Bernardo of far more serious crimes. To get a lower sentence, Homolka disclosed the horrible truth, exposing the entire scope of their iniquity. The penalties were immediate and severe. Bernardo was condemned to life in prison, where he remains to this day, living out his days in the harsh, unforgiving grip of prison walls. Meanwhile, Homolka's sentencing was quite light. She served only 12 years in prison before being released, which continues to shock and perplex many people. What's even more unnerving is her current situation, a fairly average life in Quebec, with a new spouse and three children. It's a sharp reminder that evil may wear the most deceitful masks, lurking beneath the facade of routine, waiting to strike when least anticipated. This story serves as a disturbing reminder of the depths of human depravity and the fragility of justice. It serves as a sobering warning that even in the most seemingly safe of locations, monsters can lurk, waiting to unleash their atrocities on the unsuspecting. But through it all, we must remain watchful and unwavering in our quest for truth and justice, lest such darkness overwhelm us all. Number 8. Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck, infamously dubbed as the Lonely Hearts Criminals, went on a crime rampage that sent shivers down many people's spines. Despite being convicted of taking only one life, questions were raised about their involvement in up to 20 fatalities. Their method was as horrific as it was calculated, luring victims with lonely hearts advertising in newspapers, creating a network of deception and crime across the country. Their own twisted love story began in the most nefarious of ways, when Fernandez and Beck met through one of these advertisements. Beck was soon drawn to Fernandez's charm and charisma. Little did she realize she was going to enter a nightmare world of manipulation and murder. Fernandez, aware of his control over Beck, slowly disclosed his actual objectives. He regaled her with stories of his previous escapades, including swindling money from unsuspecting women, and cleverly encouraged her to assist him in his filthy schemes. Together, they formed a lethal pair, pretending to be siblings to entice unsuspecting victims into their traps. Beck's involvement was critical. She would draw lonely people into their homes, where Fernandez laid in wait, ready to strike. Once inside, Fernandez carried out their nefarious plan with lethal precision, stealing and eventually taking their victims' lives before burying their bodies in their basement. Despite confessing to many homicides, Fernandez and Beck quickly recanted their confessions, creating a tangled web of lies and deception for law authorities to unravel. The exact scope of their atrocities may never be known, but investigators accused them of being responsible for a shocking number of crimes, ranging from 3 to 17 victims. From the perspective of the law, justice was served for only one victim, 66-year-old Janet Fay, who was subjected to their terrible acts her life cut short by Fernandez and Beck's cruel hands. Their verdict was swift, and their sentence was clear. Execution awaited them both. On March 8, 1951, the legendary Sing Sing Jail witnessed their dying moments as Fernandez and Beck faced the ultimate repercussions for their actions. With their execution, the nation sighed a collective sigh of relief, knowing that the Lonely Heart's reign of terror was over. However, the echoes of their wickedness continue to resound throughout history. Number 7. Doug Clark and Carol M. Bundy The story of the Sunset Strip criminals is a terrifying plunge into darkness, a twisted drama of depravity and cruelty set against the neon glow of Los Angeles in the 1980s. Doug Clark and Carol M. Bundy, bonded together by their shared love of dark and filthy fantasies, went on a horrific crime spree that left the city in shock. Their victims, mostly drifters, succumbed to their insatiable desire for violence, and their lives were cut short in the city's sordid underbelly. Clark, the principal perpetrator of their horrible crimes against humanity, would return home to Bundy, regaling her with stories of his heinous deeds before eventually convincing her to become his collaborator. Their depravity had no boundaries, Bundy's obsession with local country singer Jack Murray, however, 
would quickly bring their reign of terror to an end. Bundy, fearing exposure, enticed Murray into her van under the premise of making love, only to cruelly come to an end in his life with a bullet and a rapid swipe of a blade. However, the consequences of her deeds became too hard to bear. Haunted by remorse, Bundy confided in her co-workers, finally ensuring her own destiny as the truth was revealed. Arrested by law officials, she found herself on trial for the crimes that had splattered blood across Los Angeles's streets. In an attempt to defend herself, Bundy transferred the responsibility onto Clark, depicting him as the mastermind behind their homicidal rampage. Clark, facing his own reckoning, responded with claims of Bundy's involvement, implicating her in the crimes and the ensuing cover-up. Despite the courtroom drama and the complex web of accusations, the facts overwhelmingly supported Bundy's story. In the end, justice was served, however poorly. Bundy was sentenced to life in prison, where she will spend the rest of her days dealing with the consequences of her conduct. Her life ended in 2003 with sorrow and remorse. Meanwhile, Clark awaits his fate on Capital Punishment Row, the threat of passing away hanging over him like a dark cloud. His future is uncertain, a sobering reminder of the repercussions of unbridled depravity and the unstoppable march of justice. Number 6. Ray and Faye Copeland The story of Ray and Faye Copeland is a terrifying tribute to human depravity and avarice. Their story was one of murder, motivated not by passion or belief, but by an insatiable desire for fortune and a callous contempt for human life. Ray and Faye Copeland, an old couple who appeared unobtrusive in their rural Missouri existence, were hiding a lethal truth beneath the veneer of country life. They went on a decade-long horror rampage, preying on unsuspecting drifters who crossed their path. Ray, a seasoned criminal with a rap sheet littered with several incarcerations, devised a devious plan to profit himself at the expense of the defenseless souls he enticed into his web. He staged a convoluted game of deception, taking advantage of his cattle trade skills and his victims' confidence. Under the pretext of employment, he recruited drifters to buy livestock using counterfeit checks in their names, only to betray them in the cruelest way possible. The Copelands operated deliberately and brutally. After benefiting from the sale of the ill-gotten cattle, Ray brutally silenced his associates, wiping all signs of their existence and keeping his malicious venture secret from prying eyes. It was a heinous cycle of exploitation and eradication, with human lives reduced to pawns in a game of greed and deceit. For years, the Copelands worked with impunity, their misdeeds masked by the silence of the rural countryside. But as rumors of their evil crimes spread, a ray of hope appeared for the victims of their terrible plots. An anonymous tip, a beacon of justice in the darkness, broke the shroud of secrecy that surrounded the Copeland's reign of evil. Despite early skepticism fueled by the offender's advanced age, law enforcement felt obligated to investigate, prompted by Ray's extensive criminal background. The ensuing raid on the Copeland property revealed a grisly scene of misery, with the bodies of five victims strewn across the grounds. Each life was cut short by the cold, hard bullet of a Marlin rifle, wielded with chilling efficiency by Ray Copeland. In the harsh light of justice, the Copelands were held accountable for their horrible deeds. They were both given capital punishments in March 1991, cementing their place in history as the oldest people ever convicted of such a destiny in the United States. However, justice would not be entirely served. Ray Copeland passed away for natural causes in 1993, avoiding the ultimate punishment for his actions. Faye left to face the brutal reality of a life behind bars, saw her sentence commuted to life imprisonment, a lingering specter of the crimes she assisted in orchestrating. Now, it's time to check out today's subscriber pick. Among all the famous killer couples of modern history, Bonnie and Clyde are undoubtedly the most popular. The pair of American criminals who traveled the central United States with their gang during the Great Depression was known for their bank robberies, although they preferred to rob small stores or rural funeral homes. Bonnie Elizabeth Parker allegedly met Clyde Chestnut Champion Barrow on January 5, 1930, at the home of Barrow's friend, Clarence Clay, in West Dallas. Barrow was 20 years old, while Parker was 19 at the time of their first meeting. 
Parker was out of work and stayed with a female friend to help her recuperate from a broken arm. Barrow stopped by the girl's house when Parker was in the kitchen preparing hot chocolate. Both were instantly smitten. Most historians believe Parker joined Barrow after falling in love with him. She remained his faithful companion while they committed their numerous crimes and awaited the horrible end that they saw as unavoidable. Together, this couple killed 12 people, including nine law enforcement officers during their two years of criminal activity from February 1932 to May 1934. One of their most noteworthy crimes was the jailbreak at Eastham Prison Farm in January 1934. The event was supposed to be the payback Bonnie and Clyde had been planning since Clyde's release from jail two years before, but the outcomes were mixed. While the gang was successful in breaking out a handful of the convicts, including gang member Ray Hamilton, and embarrassing the jail, which had been informed about the attack at least twice, the majority of those prisoners were apprehended shortly after their escape. While the jailbreak garnered news, the perpetrators were soon apprehended. The couple spent the remainder of their short lives running, dying on May 23, 1934. They had long been sought by local police and the FBI, and after successfully evading arrest several times, retired Texas Ranger Captain Frank Hamer's investigation revealed that they were on their way to Bienville Parish, Louisiana. This enabled the cops to conduct an ambush. This time, the cops were successful, and the pair were fatally shot in their car. Despite asking to be buried together, they were buried apart. However, in 2019, Rhea Linder, Bonnie's niece, and Buddy Barrow, Clyde's nephew, were still pursuing a court order to have Bonnie's remains excavated and put next to Clyde's. Number 5. Christine Paulilla and Christopher Lee Snyder The tragic story of Christine and Christopher unfolds against a backdrop of youthful promise tainted by the seduction of drugs and violence. Paulilla, an 18-year-old high school student dubbed Miss Irresistible by her peers, met Snyder, a 21-year-old whose presence would send her into a downward spiral from which she could never recover. Their connection, which began with a common affinity for narcotics, quickly turned into a lethal romance fueled by addiction and desperation. One fateful day, Paulilla and Snyder raided the home of one of Paulilla's associates, as he wanted to steal drugs to satisfy their ravenous desires. However, what began as a little theft quickly turned into a heinous act of violence. A violent argument broke out within the boundaries of the house, shattering the peace of the evening and unleashing a torrent of needless violence. In a terrifying exhibition of depravity, Paulilla and Snyder flashed weapons and mercilessly took the lives of four people caught in the crossfire two of Paulilla's closest friends and their partners. The sound of gunfire echoed through the night, marking the tragic end of lives that had once been full of hope. Following the massacre, Paulilla and Snyder fled the scene, leaving a trail of carnage and grief. For over three agonizing years, law enforcement pursued leads and put together the shattered remains of lives ripped apart by senseless violence. Despite their efforts, Justice eluded them as the criminals remained at large, casting long shadows over a population plagued by fear and uncertainty. The wheels of justice began to spin only after Paulilla was apprehended by the long arm of the law. In a courtroom filled with emotion and pain, she confronted the repercussions of her conduct, her once promising future permanently ruined by the gravity of her crimes. Paulilla faced the hard reality of a life marked by remorse and regret, after being sentenced to spend the rest of her life in prison, with the faint glimmer of freedom tantalizingly distant in year 2046. Meanwhile, Snyder's life took a fatal turn when he succumbed to the horrors of addiction before the balances of justice could swing in his favor. His early demise, caused by his issues, served as a devastating reminder of the destructive power of substance misuse and the profound implications it has on all who fall prey to it. Finally, the story of Christine Paulilla and Christopher Lee Snyder serves as a somber reminder of youth's vulnerability and the destructive power of addiction. Number 4. Kim Edwards and Lucas Markham Between 2015 and 2016, Edwards and Markham formed a friendship so intense that it was only equaled by the darkness beneath the surface. 
Edwards's connection with her mother had long been strained, fueled by a history of marital strife that left wounds too deep to repair. The specter of previous altercations loomed big, casting a pall over their already frayed relationship. As Edwards's mother became increasingly concerned about her daughter's blossoming affair with Markham, her uneasiness became an outright concern, with her attempts to cut off the ties between the young lovers only fueling the flames of contempt and disobedience. In a terrifying act of retaliation, Edwards and Markham devised a nefarious plan to silence the source of their unhappiness permanently. They plotted to take the life of Edwards's mother, the perceived impediment to their happiness, fueled by a toxic cocktail of rage and desperation. Their diabolical strategy ended in a horrible act of violence in April 2016, shattering lives and leaving a lasting mark on a community. Markham, holding a sharp blade, charged at the startled victims with chilling determination. He took the life of Edwards's mother and younger sister. In a horrific twist of destiny, Edwards found herself unable to carry out the heinous act, providing a little respite from the abyss of darkness that threatened to devour her. Following the heinous crimes, the couple retreated into a bizarre cocoon of complacency, their hearts burdened by the weight of their horrific actions. As daylight dawned over the horizon, they sought refuge in the sad rhythms of daily living, immersing themselves in the minutia of existence as if to shelter themselves from the monstrous reality they had created. But justice, steadfast in its pursuit of the truth, would not be denied. Edwards and Markham were held accountable for their atrocities in a swift and definitive verdict, with the gavel of justice resounding with the echoes of shattered dreams and broken promises. Sentenced to 17 years in jail, they faced the terrible reality of a future defined by the harsh constraints of prison walls. Kim Edwards and Lucas Markham's legacy is a disturbing reminder of the fragility of human connections and the insidious nature of unbridled violence, as the tendrils of their crimes echoed through the fabric of society, leaving a path of devastation and suffering. Number 3. Inessa Tarverdieva and Roman Podkopayev The couple, originally from Stavropol, Russia, appeared to be an ordinary couple. Inessa, a former teacher, and Roman, a dentist, living an unremarkable life with their two daughters. However, the reality of their lives was far from mundane. Behind closed doors, the Tarvadieva Podkopayev clan kept a dark secret that would shatter their idea of domestic tranquility and plunge them into a world of crime and bloodshed. For six agonizing years, from 2007 to 2013, this seemingly ordinary family unleashed terror, leaving a path of robbery and taking people's lives behind. What distinguished them from traditional criminals was their daughter's active participation, who, far from being mere spectators, played an important role in their parents' evil activities. Under the pretense of family holidays, the Tarverdieva Podkopayevs began on a macabre journey of deception and bloodshed, preying on innocent people while posing as a wholesome family. Their bold actions culminated in 2013 when they brazenly burglarized a police officer's home, heedless of the consequences. In a dramatic encounter with police enforcement, Roman Podkopayev's life was taken in a hail of bullets, marking the beginning of the end for the notorious Gang of Amazon, as they were known in the media. For Inessa Tarverdieva and her kids, the harsh reality of their crimes finally hit home as they faced the full weight of retribution. Condemned to incarceration, they were stripped of their freedom and confined to a prison cell, their once promising lives irreversibly ruined by the evil that overtook them. Despite their incarceration, the Tarverdieva Podkopayev's influence loomed enormous, casting a long shadow over the towns they terrorized. Their reign of terror serves as a harsh reminder of the thin line that separates order from chaos, innocence from malice, and the terrible ability of regular people to sink into the depths of evil. As society deals with the fallout from their atrocities, concerns remain concerning the essence of evil and the attraction of criminality. The narrative of the Gang of Amazon serves as a cautionary tale, a sharp reminder of the fragility of trust and the constant fear of darkness lurking beyond the surface of every day. Number 2. Gwendolyn Graham and Catherine Wood The complex story of Gwendolyn Graham and Catherine Wood 
an odd couple bonded by love and bloodshed, unfolds in the setting of Michigan's Alpine Manor nursing home. What began as an innocent connection between two nurses would eventually result in a sequence of horrible crimes that shocked the nation. Gwendolyn Graham, a nurse's assistant at Alpine Manor, met her supervisor, Catherine Wood, amid their daily routines. As their romance grew, so did the seeds of a dark and twisted dream that would overwhelm them both. Graham and Wood set off on a macabre trek through the nursing home's halls, driven by a mutual need for dominance and control. Their obsessions, which included sensual asphyxiation, quickly led the way to conversations of crimes as they fantasized about the ecstasy of taking someone's life. Driven by a sick need to feel the sense of demise, Graham and Wood methodically plotted their diabolical crime game. Their victims, elderly female nursing home patients, would become unknowing pieces in their lethal game, chosen for their frailty and perceived disposable nature. Under Graham's watchful eye, the couple went on a criminal rampage, painstakingly carrying out their terrible actions as Wood acted as a lookout. Despite initial opposition from some of their intended targets, Graham and Wood were successful in ending the lives of numerous patients, their crimes going unreported amidst the commotion of the nursing home's daily routine. However, as their corpse count increased, flaws began to surface in their carefully built facade. Wood, consumed by shame and remorse, eventually confessed to her ex-husband, triggering a series of events that would bring their reign of terror to an end. Exhumations and investigations resulted in allegations of taking lives against both women, with Wood originally seeking to transfer the blame to Graham, but subsequently retracting her story. Graham and Wood were ultimately found guilty of their crimes and condemned to life in prison. However, the actual breadth of their intentions and the depths of their depravity may never be fully understood, leaving behind a legacy of horror and sorrow that haunts all who were affected by their heinous actions. Number 1. Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole The twisted story of Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole, two men whose lives were ruined by the pain inflicted on them during their formative years, serves as a terrifying reminder of the insidious nature of childhood trauma and its profound impact on the human mind. Their journey into darkness, spurred by a shared background of abuse and neglect, ended in a frenzy of violence and bloodshed, that would forever mark the fabric of civilization. The seeds of their depravity were planted in the furnace of their childhoods when both Lucas and Toole suffered unspeakable tragedies at the hands of their mothers. Forced to dress up as small girls and exposed to horrible acts of cruelty, they found refuge in each other's presence, forming a connection born of shared misery. This friendship would eventually take them down a path of unfathomable horror. Lucas and Toole, united by a similar hunger for blood and a desire for vengeance against a world that had abandoned them, began a reign of terror that would leave a path of devastation in its wake. Their atrocities, characterized by a horrible combination of sadism and savagery, were beyond comprehension. Torturing and taking innocent people's lives became their twisted sort of game, a hideous ritual developed from the depths of their common trauma. They toured America's highways and byways together, leaving behind a trail of mangled bodies. But as fast as their partnership began, it was doomed to fail. The links of their shared past proved ineffective against the corrosive effects of their own inner demons, and fissures in their partnership began to appear. Due to events beyond their control, Lucas and Toole were captured separately for crimes unrelated to their macabre murder spree. Even as they sat in prison, the specter of their crimes loomed enormous, casting a lengthy shadow over their different sentences. In a cruel twist of fate, both Lucas and Toole would go on to confess to hundreds more crimes, their accusations standing as a frightening testament to the depths of their evil. However, in the cold light of day, only a percentage of their confessions could be verified, with Lucas eventually convicted of taking three lives and Toole of six. Sentenced to life in jail, they would spend their remaining days trapped within the walls of their prison cells, their once powerful union reduced to little more than a distant memory. Even in death, Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole's legacy lives on as a cautionary tale, a harsh reminder of the corrosive effects of trauma and the dreadful potential that exists inside all of us. 
We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.